Hello everyone and in this video let me show you how you can color correct your GoPro footage. In this video tutorial, I'm going to use videos that were shot in flat picture profile. I honestly think that the GoPro color has way too much saturation and contrast, and many times, just simply because of that, uh, some of my videos were unusable. I'm also going to edit these videos in DaVinci Resolve, which is a professional color grading software that you can use for free to edit your videos. Not all of the features are available in the free version, and for some of those, you're going to need a paid version. Alright guys, so once we are in DaVinci Resolve, we are currently in the media page and I have already imported two video files that I'm going to use as an example for this uh, video project and that's gonna be one shot that I got during daylight time and the other shot is uh, a low light shot. So I'm gonna use these as an example for my uh, tutorial. Alright, so from here, let's go to the edit page and make some quick changes uh, to these videos. So basically we're gonna do a shortcut, uh, we're gonna find and look for some nice little moment, okay, somewhere around here, and we're gonna use um, a razor or uh, other uh, key band. Okay, I'm gonna delete that part which I don't like. I'll play the video a little bit more. Uh, somewhere around that, let's say. Maybe a little more. Okay, somewhere around that. And I'm gonna delete the rest of the video. So that's gonna be the daylight shot that we are going to work with. So let's quickly play it and see what we are dealing with. So notice that there is a lack of color, lack of contrast, uh, the video is quite flat, there's no sharpness to it, and maybe white balance needs to be fixed. So we're gonna be working on that. Now let's quickly take a look on the, another video that's shot during low light. Let me just quickly do some um, scene selection. So I'm gonna delete the part of the video that I don't like. Maybe somewhere around here, not too long. Okay, somewhere around here. That's gonna be a very brief cut. Okay, so let's take a look how this shot uh, looks like. So once again, uh, even though this shot, uh, mm, this video was shot during low light, uh, the contrast, color and sharpness is missing and perhaps maybe we would need to fix the white balance as well. Alright, so once we've done all of these quick changes, maybe I'll just correct, uh, because I see that this video is a little bit um, off, uh, so we probably want to uh, fix the angle. So let's go to our um, upper right corner to transform and notice that we have rotation angle. So we want to fix the angle of the video because I feel like uh, it's not straight enough. Okay, and uh, that looks much better. Uh, I'll try to maybe zoom in so it's easier for you to, to, to see what's the difference. So we're gonna straighten up because I see that the walls are kinda off um, and it doesn't look good. But notice that we have some black bars uh, somewhere in the upper right corner and also the lower left corner. So we need to zoom in our video just a little bit so we get rid of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's gone. Okay, let's quickly take a look at uh, this one. Uh -huh. Ah, it's acceptable. Alright, so once we've done these quick uh, little changes, from edit page, we're gonna go to color page. Okay, so once we are in our color page, this is where exactly the whole magic happens. So we're gonna try to color correct our video. So let's select our first video. And from here, notice that we have a node. So let's click on it with our right mouse button. And let's call it, for example, contrast. So right now we're gonna work on contrast of the video. 
and we're gonna use waveforms. Let's expand it a little bit, bring it up. And the way the waveform works is that uh, it's simply showing us uh, the highlights, shadows, and midtones uh, on the graph. So everything that's around 1023 uh, number value gonna be like pure white. And anything around zero line value gonna be like pure black. So we want to simply expand the contrast. So uh, if you take a closer look at the color wheels, we have these tools like lift, gamma, and gain. So this is gonna stand for shadows, midtones, and highlights. So what we basically try to do is simply uh, bring up the highlights so we don't cross the line. And of course, uh, take a look at the video if uh, it still looks good, but uh, always try to stick to the waveform as well. So I see that we are clipping a little bit, so we are gonna bring those down. Mm -hmm. And now, once we are happy with our highlights, I think I can bring down uh, the shadows just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it looks like before and after. Okay, I think I can lower down the midtones as well, just a little bit, just by a touch. So that's gonna be before and after. I done my contrast correction. Okay, so that uh, really looks uh, quite cool. We're gonna save the project and now we're gonna create a new node. So let's hit Alt plus S. Okay, so uh, let's click on it with our right mouse button and let's call it, for example, saturation. And take a look at the lower um, bottom corner on the left side of the screen and we have saturation. So um, let's increase our saturation just a little bit, not too crazy, not too much, just a little bit. Okay, maybe somewhere around here. Usually I try to find a really nice spot when it's simply not too much. I don't want to exaggerate the colors. I want to try to make them look uh, natural. Mm -hmm. That looks good to me. Okay, from here, let's go to make a new node. So once again, Alt plus S and we gonna go and we're gonna call it uh, maybe white balance. We will see if we need to change anything. Now let's switch our waveforms in the bottom right corner and let's switch it, uh, let's enlarge it and let's switch it to parade. Now actually the white balance is not that bad. Let me see, L let me look for a better scene. But I would like to make those uh, red bricks a little bit um, less red. So I think if we go to the um, second page of our color wheels and we change the temperature, notice that we're gonna affect uh, the colors on our parade and the whole scene gonna change as well. So if we go too much to the left, every whole scene gonna get blue. If we go all the way, for example, to the right, the scene gonna get red or yellowish. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to add a little bit of blue color to it. Uh -huh. So this is how it looks like before and after. This is a subtle, little, little change, subtle. Uh, it's not that strong, but uh, I really like it uh, this way. All right. And from here, our last correction gonna be sharpness. So we create a new node and let's call it sharpness. Now, if you take a look uh, at the middle of our screen, uh, by default, it looks like that. But if we go to sharpness icon, we have this radius and we want to bring that down to around 47 or 46 value. Sometimes I go to even 45, but never I go below that number. So let's try with 46. It's usually my preferred uh, number that I try to use uh, when it comes to sharpness. Okay, so that's gonna be before and after. Mm -hmm. It looks really nice. I think if I went with 45, that, that would be really uh, too sharp. For me, it looks good. So now let's quickly take a look how the whole video looked like before I done all the color changes and how it looks after I done my color correction. 
there is a dramatic difference. I once again added contrast, saturation, and I added some sharpness to it. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with the changes that I just made and I think that this video is finished, so I'm pretty happy with that. And from there, I'm gonna go to the second video. Okay, so once again, we're gonna create uh, our first node and call it, uh, for example, contrast. And from here, uh, we're gonna go to our waveforms, expand it, select our waveform. Now, notice that this shot is uh, a low light scene. So we already have uh, the highlights and the shadows quite rich. And uh, still, we're gonna play with it and see if it's gonna look any better. So we're gonna go once again to our color wheels and we're gonna go with the highlights and try to expand it a little bit more. Just not too crazy and constantly take a look at the waveform if you are not exceeding. Currently I'm exceeding it, but notice that only the sun, the bright sun, which is uh, somewhere around this area, uh, is uh, taking the change. The rest of the video is quite dark, so we want to bring the highlights uh, in those uh, darker parts. And now let's go to our shadows and we want to bring that up just a little bit because we want to see something. But we're gonna mm, lower down the midtones because we want to bring some contrast to the whole scene. Right, maybe we will bring up the shadows just a little bit. Okay, so let's see how it looks like. So this is how the whole scene gonna look like before and after. It's a really subtle change. Uh, I basically tried to bring up the shadows and brighten up the whole scene. Okay, but as I said, it's a subtle change. All right, so now let's create a new node and let's call it, for example, saturation once again. And we are gonna play with the colors of the whole scene. Okay. Now, if we take a look at the vector scope, and um, this tool is, uh, on, I only use it when I play with saturation, because whenever I bring up the saturation, like I will do just now, it's gonna tell me which colors I have in my scene. So notice that we have a lot of red, yellow, and maybe orange. And uh, this is what uh, represents uh, in the whole scene. As you notice, uh, our sky is really colorful, but we also have a lot of blue in it. And there is not that much of uh, any other color, right? Green or magenta, cyan, etc. Okay, so let's reduce our saturation to uh, a default number and let's bring that up somewhere when we see that it simply it's not gonna look good anymore. Okay, let's take a look at it. Okay, I'll lower it down now a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Basically how vector scope uh, works is that you don't want to exceed um, this line. You don't want to exceed below that uh, um, threshold because otherwise your colors are simply not gonna look good. Okay, let's close the vector scope now. And from here, if we go to, uh, I'll try to make it by default. From here, uh, in the middle part of our screen, we have these curves. And if we select a third dot icon, we're gonna have hue versus saturation. Now, I really want to increase the color and saturation of the sky. So I will select red and yellow color. Now, if we play with the red color and bring that up, I'll exaggerate it so you can see. Notice that the whole color of the sky, I mean the red color, uh, is more saturated. I'll also bring the yellow color as well. Or I can bring that down if you want to see how it affects the whole video. Yeah, basically, we want to play with, uh, with sing single color only. Okay. Maybe I'll just bring the, up the yellow color a little bit. And I don't like the dress, so I'll play with the blue color a little bit. I will reduce it maybe. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around here. Okay, so this is how it looks like. I'll reduce the red color by just a touch. So it looks more natural. All right, so this is how 
uh, the whole scene looks after uh, giving it some color. Now, this is how it's gonna look uh, before and after I played with saturation. So I think there's a drastic, uh, dramatic change, really. Okay, let's close it. And from here, let's create a new node. And let's call it, for example, uh, maybe like a mask. Mm -hmm. And from here, let's go to our middle part of the screen and let's select a power window. We want to select that circle and we're gonna try to bring up, brighten up uh, the model in the scene. So we're gonna select her uh, within a circle and we want to soften up the edges of our power window. We want to position the power window somewhere like uh, in the center. Yeah, and we're gonna bring midtones just slightly, maybe by a touch. Okay, so let's see how it looks like before and after. So we basically what we just did is brightening up the model because the whole rest of the screen of the scene can be dark, but the model is really important in this one. So we want to not lose any details on her. Okay, so let's close it. And sometimes uh, our power window is still gonna be on the model throughout the entire scene, but sometimes we may like to uh, track our object. So let's go to tracking. Now, the way the tracking tool works is that once we have our power window and we play the video, sometimes the model can exit the um, tracking zone. So what we want to do, we want to simply track the model so she doesn't leave that area. So let's bring our video to the beginning. And from here, make sure that you select frame. Now, basically, whenever we change our power window, we're gonna have a keyframe. So if we play a video a little bit, and whenever we move our power window, we're gonna have another keyframe. So let's play the video a little bit more. It's gonna be a very brief selection just for the purpose of the video. Notice that we create more and more keyframes and the power window is going to track the lady inside of it so she doesn't leave that area. And once we uh, brought that uh, midtones up, uh, she's simply gonna be brighter. Okay, so let's see how it looks like, how it behaves. Notice that the power window is following her uh, throughout the entire scene. And uh, basically we achieved our goal. Just make sure that you don't do it uh, too strong on your midtones, otherwise it's simply not gonna look professional. So just by a little bit. Once again, I'll bring it up just a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna create a new node and we're gonna call it sharpness. Once again, let's go to our sharpness tool to radius and we're gonna lower it down to around, uh, let's say 46. That's my preferred value. Let's play it and see how it looks like. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I think it looks good, so we don't have to add anything else. Now, notice how the whole video looked before I done any color correction to it and how it looks like uh, now. There's a dramatic difference. Alright guys, so let's summarize it all now. I hope that this video helped you out and you learned something from it. Color correcting your footage may be a little bit time consuming, but it's really rewarding and I highly recommend it for you. I hope that this tutorial was easy to follow and you learned something from it. And if you did, then as always guys, give me a thumb up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't before, smash that notification button so you don't miss any future content and see you guys in the next one. Bye.